Hi, everybody. I'm Nina Bosky. And I'm Gary Vitaco Robles. And we're doing a special feature on Behind Behind the Icon, where we're going to bring up a special birthday today. We talked about it on Wednesday when Gary and I were on a Facebook Live. But today we're going to talk about who, Gary? Daryl F. Zanuck, the head of 20th Century Fox Studios. What a loaded man he was, wasn't he? So give us a little insight before we get into how he fits into Marilyn's life and what uh, Daryl Zanuck and Marilyn's relationship was. Give us a little insight into the kind of man he was. Well, he had a very unhappy childhood and his parents abandoned him when he was 13 years old. So his, um, his mom and dad, his dad had a drinking problem. His mom was known as a very um, sexually active woman, supposedly, and um, he didn't have very positive feelings towards women or respect towards women. And he was known as um, being very innovative in the film industry and uh, uh, produced a series of really serious, wonderful films, many on social issues, aside from the Technicolor extravaganza musicals. Um, but he unfortunately had a very negative reputation of being a womanizer mm -hmm. and of uh, implementing the casting couch in the large 60-foot uh, uh, office that he maintained at 20th Century Fox Studios. And so... Back in the uh, day, it was pretty, pretty crowded. <laughs> that cast, casting couch. Yes, especially, uh, allegedly, allegedly, um, allegedly. in the late afternoon, early evening hours when he would invite starlets and he would audition starlets. And um, he had a long-term mistress, Bella Darby, who starred in many of his films, one of them being The Egyptian. And um, eventually, he fled Los Angeles and went to Europe and the the rumor was that uh, Virginia Fox, Mrs. Daryl Zanuck, uh, found out about the long-term relationship and wanted to divorce him. And the state of California had um, uh, equal right laws about divorce, where wives were able to uh, divide the husband's estate. And so he resisted that and went to Europe. Um, and Spiros Skouros took over at the studio. But he, Daryl Evzanik battled with Marilyn early in her career. When she left Fox, she was leaving his oppression. Oh, my God. Well, you know, in episode six, we, uh, I'm sure in other episodes, when we get to Daryl Zanuck and the relationship, and who knows when that'll interplay with our episodes, but we also have a, a big womanizer, Harry Cohn, who was over at uh, Columbia at the time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, back in that day, that was part of the, you know, kind of the system, so to speak. Uh, hey, today, today it probably, is. it still is. It still is. It's a little more challenging yes. to get away with it and not have it potentially, the whistle be blown. Back then it was much, I would assume, much more accepted and known about and just not talked about, you know, but I think that with, you know, the Me Too movement, there's a lot more awareness around it. And I think women, particularly with the Jeffrey Epstein case coming to light, um, there's a lot more power in numbers when women can say, you know what, I don't want to be, and Marilyn was clearly this way, I don't want to be known just as a sex symbol. I want to be known as a serious actress. So with that said, Gary, tell us a little bit about their relationship. What is it? She didn't like him. He didn't like her. What was the... The connection well, you know, he did. He viewed her original screen test in 1946 and he hired her. But we know that, you know, she was dropped within a year and then she came back to the studio in 1950. Daryl Zanuck, um, he had kind of an image of Marilyn um, typecasting her. He really wasn't invested in her exploring uh, dramatic roles and serious roles. Uh, he saw her as a sex symbol, a musical comedy queen. Um, she wanted to be, she was very ambitious and, and had the desire to become a dramatic actress. Um, and he also uh, maintained her original uh, contract from 1950, where she now became a big star, but she was restricted to uh, the uh, contract players. 
you know, the low salary, very little in terms of benefits, but yes, she was making the studio millions of dollars and uh, was saving the studio from the threat of not communism taking over, but television taking over. And yeah. so when Marilyn um, really flexed her muscles and um, rebelled and went to New York, and then ultimately renegotiated her contract, uh, he resented that. You know, he uh, felt humiliated in a way and, and uh, felt that, you know, he, his, his stature as the mogul uh, really came down a few notches. And to whom? Marilyn Monroe, a woman he didn't particularly have a lot of respect for. Um, she tried to have meetings with him uh, and to discuss her aspirations, and he wouldn't take any of her meetings. And uh, as far as, you know, casting couch rumors about Marilyn at 20th Century Fox, uh, Daryl Zanuck uh, squelched all of those rumors. He said that he wouldn't sleep with Marilyn Monroe if she paid him. So Ooh. he really, he didn't, uh, he didn't like her, especially when she, I think, asserted herself. I think well, it sounds was, like a bruised ego, if you if you ask me. It sounds like somebody that just didn't like to be uh, stood. You know, in some ways, you know, we we talk a lot about this in episode six, is that she was getting groomed from a very young age to with her mentors in her life to start seeing her worth and to be able to set her boundaries. So I think a lot of people think that she was just you know, a sleeping, you know, sleeping around and she was, she, that's how she got ahead. But she also had some really strong boundaries and, you know, a mogul like uh, Daryl Zanuck is not going to, uh, you know, be that disrupted by a Marilyn Monroe and have that much passion unless there's something that, uh, you know, kind of came before it that, that warranted mm -hmm. that kind of mm -hmm. uh, passionate hate. Yeah. <laughs> and just, yeah. You know, Exactly. Yeah, so. yeah. It was all about power, all about power and control. And so in the end, when, you know, he took off um, and, and the studio wasn't doing really well. So in the years that he was gone, Marilyn was working primarily for rival studios uh, and her own production company. And uh, she didn't come back again after bus stop until Let's Make Love. And at the time she was making Something's Got to Give, Zanuck was in Europe and the company was being mismanaged. So, you know, they were losing a lot of money. They were letting go lots of employees. They were selling off the land. Um, it became that desperate and they were losing millions of dollars with Cleopatra. So yeah. when, when Marilyn was ultimately dismissed from Something's Got to Give, she reached out to Daryl Zanuck and he was appalled by the way that she was being treated. And he did the, um, uh, Spiros Skouras had uh, hired a whole bunch of production executives, a series of them who didn't work out. And in 1962, when Something's Got to Give was under production, Peter Levathes was in charge, and um, Zanuck saw him as totally ineffective, and he was ultimately let go. And Zanuck um, actually was voted back to become um, the leader of the organization, but that was after, just around the time that Marilyn died. So he was very supportive to her in the end, and they had conversations in the end. And when Marilyn died, he said some, you know, a lovely thing about her. He, he said that, that no one really created her fame. He did not take any responsibility for her fame, which he could have because- He could have, you know, so. A studio where she had the majority of, of her career, but she said, he said that she was a hard worker who made it all on her own. And although they fought, and they disagreed, and they really kind of duked it out in, in many ways in those uh, discussions. Um, she, she always was true to her public and never let her public down. And so that's what he said at the, at the time of, of her passing. That's a and nice they're now they're very, very close to each other. Yeah, I know. But, wow. yeah. Well, Today is that special day for Daryl Zanuck today. It's his, uh, would have been, I don't even know what birthday it would have been, but it is his I birthday. I think he was born in 1902. Yeah, so we're looking at, you know, 118. <laughs> he would have been yeah. 118 today. So wherever he is, hopefully he's flying free. And a little tidbit on Daryl Zanuck and a little tidbit on Marilyn. Thanks you know, to I love, you. I love a picture of them. There's a picture taken at the um, Romanoff's event for Marilyn uh, at the wrap of the seven year itch. So um, 
Billy Wilder and Charles Feldman, who produced the film, had this big rap party in Marilyn's honor. And it was like her entree into really the upper elite of Hollywood in late 1954. And the picture is Marilyn in this strapless red gown, kind of leaning over the banquette at the table, and Daryl Zanuck kind of leaning over. And they just look so equal. You know, they and, and when you look at them and, and the body language and the power and the and the way she's sitting with the way her hand is up or the way his hand, they just look very like equal in their power. One of them is not overpowering the other. I kind of like that picture of them because what although we should do, boss, let's let's post that so people can see that that picture. I think they would like to see that given the fact that we're talking about it. And uh, so, as every segment we do, what do we say, Gary? Hold a good thought for Marilyn and be sure to hold a good thought for yourself.